Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger with Metal, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a 3D portrait collage animation using Freeform Pro and After Effects. You can easily change the direction and animation style with just a few clicks once it's set up. Before we start, you can download the free project file for this tutorial on Metal's website. I'll have a link for that in the description. And as always, you can download a free trial of the plugin Freeform Pro from Metal.com. All right guys, go ahead and jump over to After Effects. All right guys, let's go ahead and create a new composition. This will be our main comp, so I'll just name it main comp. Have it be 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second, and I'll have this be 10 seconds long. Go ahead and click OK. Now let's create a new solid to apply Freeform Pro to. So I'm just gonna right click, and I'm gonna do a new solid. And with the solid we create here, I'm actually not gonna have it be the comp size, I'm gonna have it be perfectly square. So I'm just gonna leave this at 960 by 960. It's just gonna work with Freeform Pro a little bit easier because we're gonna be creating a square shape in the end and so working with a square solid just works a lot better. And I'll just name this Freeform Pro. And I'm gonna change the color of this to be perfectly white just so it shows up a little bit easier as well. Click OK. Now with that selected, let's go ahead and apply Metal Freeform Pro. And let's first navigate over to the primitives I'm gonna to toggle this down and we're gonna have this be planes because the portraits are actually gonna be projected on the planes. And right now we have so many shapes on here, it just still looks exactly the same. So let's go ahead and adjust the primitives grid on the X and Y. So I'll just change this to six and six. So now we kind of see a nice grid there we have set up. Now the end goal here is to have, again, the, each one of these be the portraits, the different images that we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead and import in our images. So I'm gonna go over to the project panel and I'm just gonna double click. And that's gonna open up the import window and you can see I've got a whole host of Adobe stock images here with different portraits on them. And I wanna import this in as an image sequence. So I'm gonna select the first one and just come down here and you're gonna see importer JPEG sequence. Go ahead and check that on and select import. And we'll see that over here that it has imported those as a sequence and we have zero to 23. So there's 24 total different images here. And I wanna make sure it has the same frame rate as our composition is. So I'm gonna right click on that and come down here to interpret footage. We're gonna select main. And then in here, you can select assume this frame rate. So it's already set to 30 and that's what we want it to be. But if you wanna change that, you can. And you can also set it to loop multiple times if you wanna do that as well. I'm just gonna click okay. So let's drag these images, that image sequence into our composition. I'll just place it below the freeform layer and we can actually turn off the visibility for that. So let's go back over to freeform pro and let's go into the settings here. And let's go ahead and just navigate to the texture settings where you can see apply texture. And for the primitive texture layer, we can just go ahead and select that image sequence. And now we can see those images are being projected onto the planes here, but we're only seeing one currently. So let's go over to sampling. And I'm gonna select interval still frame. So it is gonna basically select different frames throughout. And we can actually adjust this so it will select each of our frames. So the number of samples, I wanna set this to be 24 because that's what I'm working with. So however many images you're working with, set that value to that. And then the way this uh, image sequence works, if I go ahead and double click on it here, you can see each frame is a different image. So if I just set this interval to be one, it'll basically take one from each frame and those will all be different images. So it's a quick and easy way to do that. So under sampling here for the interval frames, I'll just set this to one. Now you can see we have a wide variety of all the different images in our sequence. Now, the first thing we're gonna notice here is that the aspect ratio is off because these are being projected onto perfectly square planes and our actual image sequence here is more kind of like not, not quite 16 by nine, but we can see the size here is 512 by 400 on the actual size of those images. So let's go back over to our Freeform Pro and under the primitives here, we can adjust the X, Y, and Z scale here to match the images. So for Z, we'll just set this down to one because it doesn't have any actual depth to it. For the X scale, we'll type in 512. And for the Y, we'll type in 400. And now we can see the images are quite large and really too big for what we wanna be working with. One easy solution you could do with something like this is just divide it, the X and the Y by the same number. So if I go up here to 512 and I just type in divide by four, we can hit that and that brings us to 128. And then for 400, obviously that divided by four is gonna be 100. So now we have the correct aspect ratio, but just smaller versions, so about a fourth the size. But you can see now everything's being projected correctly. And you can continue to resize this, again, just making sure that the ratio stays the same. I, I think in the original project, I had this set on 140. 
And then for the Y scale is at 110. And that just bumps those up in size a little bit, but again, they have the same aspect ratio there. Another setting we can adjust here in the primitive is gonna be the auto orientation. We want this to orient to camera. And since we're on that, let's go ahead and create a new camera. So I'm gonna right click here for new camera. And I'm gonna work with a 20 millimeter preset camera here. Go ahead and click OK. And let's go back over to Freeform Pro. Now it may not seem like it right now, but we are working in 3D space. So let's go over to the 3D transform. And you can see we have position and rotation here. So I'm gonna rotate this a little bit on the X axis. And now you can really start to see how these images are sitting in 3D space. And if we need to reposition this, we can. So if I wanna move this a little further away from the camera so we can see all the images, and maybe move this up just a little bit because we have that kind of tilted at an angle. But we could quickly create a loop here with something like the rotation. So I like uh, rotating the Z axis here. You can see as this is done and all the images there on screen. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit more. But you can see all the planes are kind of honoring their position in 3D space and not cutting each other off. So again, this is a really quick and easy way for us to kind of create something quite complicated with images, right, like a commercial project uh, using planes in Freeform Pro. So let's go ahead and create a loop here with this. So I'm just gonna set this back at zero for the Z, do a keyframe. We'll just do a five second loop here so it's a little shorter. And I'll go ahead and set this to be one for the rotation. And we can just do a quick random preview of this. And we can see all the images rotating and this will perfectly loop. Now what's also cool is we can rotate this on multiple axes. So I'll just go back here to the very beginning and we can do the same thing with the Y axis. So I'll create a keyframe there, move back down here to the end, set this at one for a full rotation of that on the Y. And I'll just scroll through here with this and you can see how much we've changed that up dynamically by rotating on multiple axes. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the rotation on the Y there Leave that back at zero, just so we're working with the Z rotation here for this next demonstration. Let's go ahead and add in a light so we can work with some shadows and some light fall off. So I'm just gonna right click here and do a new light. And I'm gonna have this be a point light and we'll just leave it all the settings at default. Make sure cast shadows is on though. Go ahead and click okay. Now we can see we're getting some nice lighting fall off here as well as some shadows. So I'm gonna select that point light. I'm just gonna move it kind of off to the side here, maybe back a little bit. You can see if I zoom in here, we're getting some shadows right there. And it really as is default, they're completely black. And it almost looks like it's clipping or cutting into the image behind it. And so I think that's a little bit extreme. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit more so we can kind of get those shadows up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here with this is select that light and just hit AA on the keyboard. And that'll open up the light options. And what we need to change here is the shadow darkness. So by default, it's gonna be 100%, so it's completely black. So let's drag this down, I recommend something like 50 or 40%, somewhere in that range. And you can see it just kind of makes it a lot lighter. Whereas we're getting that nice shadow on those images, but it's not so dark that it almost looks like it's clipping or cutting the images off. So that's helping sell that 3D. And again, we're getting some nice natural lighting fall off. You can see how that affects and reacts to the images here. Something else we can do is actually add in some fog. So it kind of affects the images further back in Z space. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come back to Freeform Pro. Let's scroll down here to the bottom and we're gonna see environment and we're gonna have fog here. Let's go ahead and set the fog type to be smooth. And we may have the display grid pop up like it is here. If you don't wanna turn that off, just come here to display grid, uncheck that and that'll disable it. Now let's adjust the near and the far distance. So I'm just gonna type in 1000 for the near and then we'll type in 2000 for the far. Now we can see what's happening here. You can see the back images here, if I go ahead and bring this far in, are basically falling off into the fog. And we can kind of adjust the near and the far to get a nice balance there. So I'm gonna push the far pretty far back there, somewhere in the 1000 to 2000 range. But again, if I check this on and off, we can see the difference that makes there. Basically drawing more attention to those in the front. And if we go ahead and scroll through this, you can see how it's impacting those that are further back. Now what's also cool is you can change the color of the fog. Let's say if you're working, you know, with a colored motion graphic background. So I'll just go ahead and create a new solid here. Let's make this kind of a medium red color, make this comp size. I'll just call this BG. Click okay, move this to the very back of everything. 
Now we can see our fog is black here, but if we come back over to our freeform layer, it's like the color picker, it's like that red. You can see it falls off more naturally kind of into this scene with whatever you're working with. And I can actually increase that if we want to. So it really clips it off there. So that's kind of a neat look how it really just fades all the way into that background. Now really quickly, I wanna show you guys a few other ways you can add even more movement to whatever freeform image collage you're working with. So I'm gonna come up here to the very top and under editing controls, we have these things called auto tangents. Go ahead and check those down and check on enable. And it's gonna allow us to adjust the midpoint biases in multiple different ways. And we can keyframe these as well. So I'm just gonna adjust these. You can see what's happening. So you can see how this is kind of offsetting some of the middle rows and we can keyframe these to have kind of a looping animation with them as well at the same time as this is rotating. And we can also do that with some of the endpoints, midpoints, and all sorts of other points with this. So you can really create some cool, complicated, loopable animations uh, with all these freeform planes that we're projecting here in our scene. Also should note, because all these are orienting to the camera, if you ever wanted to actually animate the camera itself, we could just select our camera here. I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard, and I can just go ahead and create my own animation rotating around this, and it will be affected by the fog and the lighting and everything else we can see. We can also use a displacement map to kind of offset our images. What I've got here is just a displacement composition, which has a white solid that's been feathered coming across this black background. So let's jump over to this composition. And again, this is included with the project file if you want to break this down even further and check out all the other ways you can displace things using Freeform. But under this placement mapping settings, we can select a displacement layer. So there's that layer that I set up there. And we can come through here if we scroll through we're gonna see how it's actually displacing the images based off of that displacement layer. And we can also change the displacement height, so if you just want it to be really high or low, you can make those setting adjustments there as well. So you have several options for controlling animations like this with Freeform Pro. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. And don't forget you can download that free project file from metal.com, and I'll see you guys on the next one.